Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a video about how to diagnose and repair a headlight problem on this 2002 Honda Civic. This car belongs to my son Aiden. This is his first car. We got this car really cheap from a mechanic that we know and trust. And it developed a problem with the low beam headlights not working. High beam works, low beam does not work. Neither light, left or right. I'm going to start preface this by saying that if you just got one headlight out it's probably just the you know the headlight itself right but when you got both lights out something else is going on so here's what the steering column looks like with the covers off i actually started to do this repair and diagnosis before i decided to do the video so that's why i already have this apart but this couldn't be easier to take apart so basically it's like a clamshell plastic cover an upper and lower cover this is what the lower cover looks like. And there are three screws that go up from the bottom here. And, and the upper cover actually basically snaps into place on top of these areas right here. We noticed that this cover was already partially off on one side. And we could see now the reason for that is because the clips on this side have broken. So somebody was already in here at some point doing something. So my first bit of advice that I recommend uh, is that you disconnect the negative battery cable off the battery before you open this up. Uh, that's a common safety uh, precaution that people take whenever they're going to open up a steering column area because if you're poking around in here there is the potential danger, I guess, of accidentally firing off the airbag. So it's just a good idea to do that. Um, I see a lot of guys doing repairs like this and they don't bother doing it. Uh, that's, you know, to each his home. But I, for, for, the, for the short amount of time it takes to do that, I don't see the point in not doing it. So I took that off. Now, the switch itself. The switch itself looks like this right here. Okay, this assembly. It actually lives right here. It slides in right here, okay, and clicks in. So there's a tab you have to pry up right here to get this to slide out. Before you can slide this out, there are two screws, one here and one here, that we removed. And before you can slide it out, you also have to undo the plug, this big plug right here. So this switch has one plug, one large plug, for all of the wiring. There is a tab right, right here where my thumb is pointing. This little tab right here, you have to push this down to get this plug to release. Don't force it without pushing this down first. You don't want to break this. There's a number of different ways to source this switch. Many auto parts stores may even have this in stock as an aftermarket part. The thing is, cheapest I found was about $36 on Amazon, but we'd have to wait a little longer. I happen to live in an area where for whatever reason we have a crazy amount of competing auto, chain auto stores. So uh, I checked online with several of them and I found out that O'Reilly's had a switch in one of their sister stores that they could get here in one day so we ordered it from them total cost uh, was about forty six dollars plus tax something like that they had a cheaper switch but that was gonna take longer to get uh, and again it was gonna be about like thirty six bucks so we went with the little bit more expensive switch with you know with tax and everything so that brings me to why I'm going to show you how to diagnose this switch or test your, your existing switch. Because it's you can see how easy it is to take out. So if it's that easy to take out, why not just test it to determine whether or not it's your problem? Instead of buying a $45 part, which is an electrical part, so most auto stores will not accept returns of electrical components. So once you pay that 45 bucks, if you slap that switch in and you still have a, the same problem, you're out of luck. So this is to help people not make that mistake. So what I did was I Googled 2002 Honda Civic headlight wiring diagram. Then I looked at Google images and I looked through the images until I found one that was a pretty basic diagram for the headlights. So this is your basic wiring diagram 
This rectangle right here represents the multifunction switch. These numbers right here represent the pin numbers on the switch. So you can see that actually as far as the headlights go, there's really only one, two, three, four, five connections for the headlights. Actually, technically only four connections to the headlights because 13 actually energizes the relay for the tail light circuit, okay? So if your tail lights aren't working, you're gonna be looking to this problem, you know, a problem probably in this circuit, or it could still be a switch issue because the way this switch is made, there are two switches here that are mechanically together so that when you, that's what this dotted line represents, so that when you turn the switch on, you actually are closing two switches. So these two switches right here close when you activate this knob on the end, which is the off, parking lights on, headlights and parking lights on. So it's a three position switch. So when this switch is in the off position, both of these switches are open. When we turn the headlights on, just two clicks, both of these switches close. This part of the switch closes, energizes this relay, which turns on your tail lights. But then this switch closes and connects pin seven to this black line right here over to pin 12. Notice all of these switches in here, one side of all the switches are tied to pin 12 and pin 12 goes to a ground. The reason why that's important to see is because if you have a bad ground connection or if you get a problem with this wire right here, this switch won't work at all. So in my particular case here, because the high beams work, that would indicate that this ground circuit's working. So I probably don't have a problem with this wiring here. So this switch controls turning the lights on and off. This switch controls high beam or low beam. So now I know that since my, my high beams work, this switch is working. Not only that, but for the high beams to work, which here are the headlights, there are two filaments in each headlight, a high beam and a low beam. Notice that the power coming into either one of these filaments comes from the same source up at the top here, which is actually the contacts in these two headlight relays, which are fed through a fuse. So if this fuse blows, you have no lights. So we know this fuse is good. We don't even need to test it because I've got high beams. We know these relays are working because I have high beams. The relays are energized by these coils that are internal to the relays, which get powered by the blue red wire. Blue slash red means it's a solid blue wire with a red stripe, which is pin seven, which when this switch is closed and the lights are, you know, it's in the light on position, it's grounded. So if seven is grounded, that's gonna turn on my lights. Whether it's low beam or high beam is actually decided by this switch, the low high dimmer, which is on the other side of the lights. So when these relays are energized, 12 volts is being fed to all of these filaments at the same time. And you're like, well, how come not all the lights light? Well, because we have to complete the we have to complete the path of current flow by sending something to ground. So we tie together the two low filaments and the two high filaments. So we've got two lines here, four and six. If six is grounded, the low beams are on. If four is grounded, the high beams are on. And again, that's decided by this switch, which is internal to this 12, uh, this multifunction thing, right? All right, so now it should be really easy to diagnose the switch. All we need to do is figure out which 
pins on this switch are pin 12, 6, 4, and 7 and do some continuity checks. There's a plastic cover that was on the back here I removed. Uh, it doesn't really show you much of all of, of anything so I just took it off out of curiosity. There's also a big piece of plastic broken off here because I was going to try and pry this open to see if it was serviceable in any way but it doesn't seem like they want you to do anything to the switch other than replace it when it goes bad. So the other little thing that I thought was kind of interesting was they don't bother telling you the, the there are no numbers anywhere on this to tell you which pin is what. The pins aren't numbered. So how did I determine which pin is what when looking at this? What they do tell you is they tell you the color of the wires. So I knew that pin seven is gonna be a blue wire with a red stripe. So I went back here and looked at my plug and realized, oh, look at this. There is a blue wire with a red stripe right here. So that pin right there, which is the bottom left when looking at it from the back, is gonna be the top left when looking at it from the front. That's pin seven. So if I started to make a diagram of this thing and looked at it and went, okay, well, if that's pin seven, let's see, then there's a wire right there that's red with a white stripe right next to it. And guess what? The low beam is red with a white stripe, pin six. Six is next to seven. So now I'm starting to figure something out, right? Pin 12, according to the diagram, is the ground and it's a black wire, solid black wire. Look at this this extra thick solid black wire. Notice it's thicker than all the others. It's thicker than all the others because basically it's, ca it's carrying the current of any one of these wires or multiple wires at the same time, depending on the switch configuration, you know, wh wh whether they're on park or whatever. So we know that's pin 12. There's a green wire with a yellow stripe on one side of it, which is not in our diagram, so that's used for something else. There's a solid blue wire over here on this side which I noticed on the diagram, the solid blue wire is 13. That makes sense, 13 is next to 12. So looking at the switch from the, looking at the connector from the back, because when we plug it into the uh, switch, I wanna be able to know what pins are what looking, looking into that, right? Pin six is the red wire with a white stripe. Then pin seven is this one on the lower left-hand corner. Then the second row, it goes back to the top right. That's pin eight, nine, 10, 11. Pin 12 is the black wire. Pin 13 is the solid blue wire, okay? Then I Googled 2002 Honda Civic headlight switch pin out, P-I-N-O-U-T, one word. And looked through Google images and found this picture. Voila, here's your, here's your switch. Tab facing up on the top. So this view right here is looking at the back of the switch. Top right corner is pin seven. The one right next to it is pin six. So six is your low beam. Seven is the pin that when it's grounded turns the lights on. And four is your high beam. So what's supposed to be happening is to turn the lights on, Pin seven gets grounded through this switch. That turns the lights on. So when you turn this knob here to the on position, this pin should have continuity to this pin, seven and 12. That's the first thing that has to happen for the lights to work. Then for your low beams to work, pin six has to be grounded through this switch to pin 12. So you should have continuity between six and 12 when this switch is, when this, when this switch is pulled back, right? When this lever is pulled back. To turn the high beams on, you push this forward, right? So if I push this lever forward, that's high beams. And the high beams, that's pin four, gets grounded. So continuity between four and 12. So four and 12 gives you high beam, six and 12 gives you low beam, and seven and 12 turns the lights on, period. So I already know, because my high beams work, I know that I'm, my, my section of my switch that makes seven 
ground to 12 or 7 and 12 common, that's working. So I already did a continuity check. You get a uh, ohm meter and you actually, uh, if you get a small alligator clip, you can reach down in there. Or if you have long probes, you can actually reach down in there. And basically you're going to keep one probe on pin 12 because that's the ground for all of these switches. So you're going to keep one meter lead on here and you're looking for continuity. You're measuring the ohms and you're going to, if you look between pin 12 and pin, pin 12 and pin 7, if the switch is off, you should have infinite resistance. When you turn this switch on, then pin 12 and 7 should have very low resistance. Then you're going to look between pin 12 and pin 6. And if this, if this switch is on and the lever is in the low beam position, you should have continuity. And then in high beam, the continuity between 12 and 6 goes away and 12 and 4 have continuity. Well, I already did that test. I'm not going to bore you with the results. Basically, what I found was, sure enough, I have very low resistance between 12 and 6. I'm sorry, 12 and 4, high beam. When I put it to 12 and 6, I have about 150 ohms, which you might think, hey, that doesn't actually sound too bad, but uh, when the high current's trying to pass through it, it, it's more than enough to stop the lights from working. So this switch is bad. All right, fresh from O'Reilly Auto Parts, we have a import import direct brand, part number 18-1174, switch interrupter. Yeah, nothing says foreign speak like switch interrupter. All right, so. Hey, don't don't hook it back up yet. And it's actually a pretty pretty good match. It's almost identical. I mean, it is identical, really. All right, so to install the switch, you basically just slide it into this thing until it clicks like that. And then the release tab has to face up on the plug. This little plastic tab has to face up on the plug. The reason why I didn't plug this plug in before sliding it into position is because this wiring harness isn't really long enough to let me do that. This is easier to do with two hands. There we go. Two hands it's easier to do. And click that in like so. And all right, go ahead and hook the battery up. Okay, turn the lights on. That's low beam, right? Yeah. High beam. Yep, working. All right, shut them off. All right, and that's it. Pretty easy fix. Definitely something that you can do yourself and save quite a few, uh, quite a few bucks from the uh, cost of labor at a garage. I mean, I figured you would get a one hour minimum charge for something like this anyways if uh hey you could you could take your battery and put it back in your golf cart